Good morning, guys, or good afternoon. Whether you're joining me from the present or the future, welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Happy Monday once again, guys. This video is going to hit you guys a little bit later on Monday as planned, but we are starting a brand new set on our Future Fight series, which is VBT9 um, Butterfly to Moonlight. So this is our set that contains new support for Murakumo, Dark Irregulars, Pale Moon, and Grand Blue. So um, we're getting a lot of our, um, our G reprint stuff in this set for um those clans that i just mentioned so um there's a lot of fun decks in this um this set and i'm really hyped to go over it with you guys um i just finished you know today doing all of my you know kind of research and like learning about the clan so um it's going to be a fun ride but today we're going to be covering the harry deck so if you guys uh did not play g format this is a pale moon unit card that was um the kind of the forerunner the forefront of g format for pale moon so he was the the ace card and you know the strides and all that stuff so they remade him and they uh gave him like new mechanics and stuff like that for standard and uh his deck is really really fun to be honest so we're gonna get right into it here if you guys haven't already be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell button so you don't have to miss any content going forward also be sure to check out that join button um next to the subscribe button if you guys are interested in supporting the channel a little bit further and getting a little bit more out of the channel also be sure to check out my second uh channel let's plays animes where we cover anime animation and video games and also be sure to check out our other social medias down below in the description as well such as facebook instagram twitter and our um, new twitch account that is a combination for both of my channels um but with that being said let's get right into the deck here so like I said, we're talking about Harry today. Super fun deck. Um, honestly, I have no problems with this deck except for when we don't get a grade three. When we don't get a grade three, this deck can be kind of awful. But I mean, I guess that's any deck, right? Um, but we only run four grade threes in this deck, so that's possibly why we have trouble getting the grade three sometimes. But there's not really another grade three that you want to ride in in this deck. So um, let's get right into it. So. First of all, we start off with um, two grade fours, uh, which is something that Pale Moon got in this set. They got uh, the ability to add a grade four to their main deck. So their grade four is called Starry Pop Dragon. So let's talk over um, its rear guard abilities because this is uh, a key unit to um, your final turn or your winning image in the deck. So it has three rear guard abilities. The first one is Continuous. This unit gets plus 5,000 power for each of your rear guards with Magia Doll. Um, with different card names so ideally you want to have a field that has prana lunatech uh, dark side mirror master and flying periton all on the rear guard circle that way um it will be getting plus 20k i mean you can't always have what you want and you can't have always have the perfect field but that is ideally what you'd like to have because you want to reach a power threshold for this card which is 40k and we'll talk about that here shortly the second rear guard ability is when placed on the stage you get an imaginary gift excel so um what harry does with his new mechanic is he kind of does something um specific with the uh with the excel circle and is that when he gets when he first creates an excel circle one of his um the excel circle becomes known as the stage and so basically instead of creating multiple excel circles like other excel decks do you basically every single time that you create an excel marker you place it on the same circle and it stacks up and so basically all the power for the excel um circles like transfer all to one circle and um that unit has or that uh circle has special properties as being the stage card so there's certain abilities in this deck that can only use their abilities when they're on the stage um one of those is starry pop dragon and the other one is lore pigeon pop dragon so just be aware of that and you definitely want to use this properly so that you don't misplay and uh, you have these on the stage at all times its third ability is on rear guard circle when it attacks if this unit's power is forty thousand or greater um then until the end of the battle this unit gets plus one critical and your opponent cannot call sentinels from his or her hand and at the end of the battle retire this unit so this is very very good because this is clearly a finisher type card so this is pretty much the card that you want to attack with last on every single one of your battle phase attacks uh so you get like multiple attacks and then you get to you know attack with sorry pop dragon so basically um you'll get you know if you have the ideal hand with an ideal field you will be getting five attacks so that's really really good because that's what an excel deck that's around what an excel deck would be getting anyways um and then also you know one of your attacks is just really really big 
and it's like 40 at least 40k with a critical and your opponent can't guard with sentinels and it retires itself at the end of the, uh, the end of the battle and that's really really good because that means that nothing can happen to it um so there's ways to get this card from deck drop zone um or the soul i think uh deck drop zone yeah deck drop zone or soul so that means that when you're playing against things like narukami um this is not just left on the board to retire and bind and stuff like that so it won't be left in a way where you can't get it back um i will say that against uh we can say against shiranui which is not a deck that we're worried about yet but against that deck when it will be coming out that deck can bind cards from your drop zone so it can bind your starry pop dragon so do be careful of that if you're playing against that deck in the future when that comes out but because of that and because it's so searchable we only run two of the grade four moving on to our grade threes we have four masked magician harry so harry's skill um has two vanguard skills the first vanguard skill is when placed choose one of your additional rear guard circles and it becomes a stage until the end of that fight and then during this fight the stage becomes your only additional rear guard circle and you move all the excel markers to the stage so the stage basically like i just explained becomes an area where you place all of your excel markers together and all of its power um, on the excel markers stack together and that's cool too because every time that you generate an excel if you go excel 2 you'll be drawing a card so whenever you call out sorry pop dragon during the battle phase and you call it onto the stage and you generate an imaginary gift excel if you if it's excel 2 then you'll be generating um you'll be generating a draw for yourself and if you go excel one then that's clearly a bigger power threshold for starry pop dragon to hold so it's really up to you which excel you guys want to go um i prefer going excel two but i could completely see how excel one would be viable as well um so harry's second ability is on the vanguard circle once per turn during the main phase you can counter blast one and discard a card from your hand call it to two cards with magia doll and it's different card names from your soul to rear guard and they get plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. And then if, if our opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, we may call four cards instead of two. So this is really cool because for a light cost, which, you know, Counterboss 1 and discard a card is a very light cost, um, you can get cards out of your soul um, and fill up your board. And then every single turn, you know, they go back to soul, um, usually because you have your grade twos and your grade ones that say when they're retired from guard circle, they can go into soul. So you really want to hold them um, for shield and guard with them and then that way you get to call them back out with Harry and then same thing if you intercept so once you call your grade twos out you really want to focus on intercepting first before you use any of the other shield that you would use naturally in your hand so moving on to our grade twos we actually have 15 grade twos because our grade two lineup is very important um, so first of all we have four card dealer Jacqueline so Jacqueline's skill is Vanguard rearguard when placed counter boss one look at the top seven cards from the top of your deck uh, look at the top okay look at those seven cards from the top of your deck and reveal a total of up to two either uh magia doll cards or lord a uh, pigeon pop from their card names from among them put into your hand and shuffle your deck and then if you reveal two cards you get to put a card from your hand into soul so jacqueline's very very good because a she thins out your deck b she uh pluses you because you can also you, you can just choose to get two magia doll cards and the card that you put in the soul doesn't have to be one of the two cards that you just got so i think that um because of that she has a very good variety of situations where she's useful and uh, that's why we run her at four so then for our next way two we have four lore pigeon pop so what lore pigeon pop does is on rear guard circle when placed you can put up to one card with Magia Doll and its card name from your drop zone to your soul. So if for some reason you had a Magia Doll card hit the drop zone, which you normally shouldn't because when you're guarding with them, they would go to your soul. Um, and then the only other way that I could see them hitting your drop zone is if you hit one into damage zone and then you healed it off or something like that. Um, or if your opponent used an effect to retire your um, Magia Doll when it was their turn. So. Um, Lore Pigeon Pop allows you to add that Magia Doll, whatever that lost Magia Doll is, from your drop zone to your soul. And then this is the most important part about this card is the second ability, which is at the end of the battle that this unit attacked. If this unit is on the stage, then you can counter blast one, return this unit to your hand, and then you get to search your deck, soul, or drop zone for up to one Starry Pop Dragon, call it to the stage, and if you search your deck, then shuffle your deck. So this is very important because once you get your hands on one Lord Pigeon Pop, that's the only Lord Pigeon Pop that you're going to need for the entire game as long as you make sure that you don't guard with it or do something stupid with it. 
So as um because its ability bounces itself to hand and there's no you know um hand traps that your opponent can use against you to destroy your units during the battle phase, then that means that you will always have this card in your hand and you will always have access to your Starry Pop Dragon every single turn. So once you have the setup, it's good. And then the other three lore pigeon pops that you come across can be used as random, you know, attackers or random guard um, or anything like that. Moving on to our next raid two, we have four Magia Doll um, Prana. So Prana actually used to be a stride in G format, but now it is a grade two. So that's a pretty cool touch on it. Um, Magia Doll Prana says when retired from the guard circle, you may put this unit into your soul. So that's like most of the Magia Doll cards. Um, a lot of them give you shield, uh, like a defensive pressure to your hand because you're able to guard with them and then they go into soul. So that means that you want to hold back on these cards instead of just playing them out. Now for the grade twos, you can just play them out and be fine because that, that allows you to just still intercept with them and they still will go to the soul after the battle. Um, but the second ability is when placed by your unit's ability with Harry in its name. This unit and one of your vanguards gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. So you can call out multiple Pranas, give plus 20k to Vanguard and then plus 10k to each. Um, or if you're going with the ideal setup of calling one Prana, one Lunatech, one Dark Side Mirror Master and one Flying Periton, then you will be uh, actually replacing each part of Harry's skill, making it free for you. And I'll go over that here in a minute. So um, moving on to our last grade two, we have a three Magia Doll Lunatech Dragon. Lunatech Dragon also used to be a stride in G format, so this is cool that they added it as a doll card, and it's a grade two. So it has the first um, ability that, you know, the same ability we just went over with Prana, and I'm just going to go ahead and say that Prana, uh, Lunatech, Mir uh, Dark Side Mirror Master, and Magia Doll Flying Periton all have the same first rear guard ability, and that's basically just to give you the ability to keep shielding your hand and without worrying about, you know, sacrificing your pieces with uh, guarding. Um, so then its second ability is when placed by your unit's ability with Harry in its name, choose up to one of your opponent's rear guards and your opponent puts that unit into their soul. So this is a little bit of control for you guys. Now you have to be careful because some clans, you will be providing them resources by giving them soul. Um, but some clans, the it's more important to get rid of the unit than give them soul or they don't utilize their soul that great that often. So you're able to call this out and be fine. Also on a ideal final turn for you to finish your opponent if your opponent's at five damage getting rid of their uh, grade twos can you know just be the difference um between you clutching out the game and them surviving your turn and moving on to their next turn so moving on to our grade ones we have four magia doll dark side mirror master um dark side mirror master has the same first ability as the units that we just discussed and then on rear guard, when it's placed by your unit's ability with Harry and its card name, you get to counter charge one. So that cancels out um, Harry's counter boss one to call. And then Flying Periton does uh, the other half of it, which is when placed by the ability of your unit with Harry and its card name, you draw a card. So basically, if you use Harry's skill and then you place a Dark Side Mirror Master and a Flying Periton, you've already canceled out the whole cost for Harry, which is great because it's a break even. And then you just plus by getting units to your board and shield to your board in the form of, you know, your intercepts and stuff like that. So it's a very, very good combo. Um, and it really is balanced out the way that it um, pluses out your deck for you. So moving on to our last two grade ones, we have two Moonlight Melody Tamer Betty and two Masquerade Bunny. Now these are not Magi at all cards, but these do help you um, get the ideal soul and feel that you would like to have. So um, by Betty's ability, it uh, she has a Vanguard ability and a Rearguard ability. The first one is Vanguard when placed, draw a card and put a card from hand into soul. So usually I'll just draw a card um, off my starter and then draw a card off of Betty. And then I put like a Magia doll card or something that would be useful into the soul. Something that I don't need. You can even put like a Starry Pop Dragon in the soul because of Lord Pigeon Pop being able to get it from the soul um, too. So anytime that you would like have a card ability that causes you to discard or causes you to uh, put a card in the soul, you can put Starry Pop Dragon in knowing that you will just get it later when you need it. Um, it's rearguard ability of uh, Betty is on rearguard circle rest this unit look at the top three cards of your deck Put a card with Magia doll on its card name from among them into the soul and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order So um, that's a cool ability too. just helps you fill your soul with Magia doll units Then um, we run two masquerade bunny rounding out our grade one lineup So masquerade bunny has two vanguard rearguard abilities. The first one is a continuous 
that says if you called one or more cards from the soul this turn this unit gets plus 5,000 power so it can become a 13k attacker or 13k booster which is very solid and then its second ability is when placed from hand look at the top five cards from your deck and reveal it to one grade three from among them put into your hand shuffle your deck and if you put a card discard a card so again if you're missing that harry because we only have four grade three so if you don't have your Harry Masquerade Bunny is just another additional way to try to get that into your hand without having to G assist for it. So moving on to our triggers, we have um, our Zero Starter, which is Happiness Collector. This is our um, the same as the G Starter, but it's just you know new art. But it does the same thing as every other starter in the standard game, which is when wrote upon draw a card, and then if your opponent's Vanguard is Grade One or greater, put a Quick Shield ticket into your hand. So again, you do have discard effects in this deck, like you know for Harry and stuff like that. So you do want to um, be able to just, you know, get a free discard with your quick shield ticket um, if you haven't already used it to block because it can be extra shield as well. Um, and then for our triggers, we run eight crit, four draw, and four heal. We run four dynamite juggler, two poison juggler, and two silver thorn barking dragon. Four Hades hypnotist, which is our draw trigger sentinel. And then uh, we have four tinder breeder, which is our heal. Um, and then that was the deck portion of the video. So we're going to get right into the game portion of the video. So for our first game, we're actually playing against Nubatama. Um, I actually covered this, ironically, in the um, deck portion part of the video. Uh, so we ride and we draw from our starter. We use Betty to draw and then we put a card into soul. Um, our opponent rides this grade one, which allows him to look at top seven for a Shiranui card and put it into his hand. So he puts a Shiranui card in, and then he calls out a Kuragiri for some early rush. So we block this, because uh, we didn't want the early damage, but we did want to take the rear guard because he didn't hit a crit. Um, and then he, uh, we play Card Dealer Jacqueline. We look at the top seven cards. We get a Dark Side Mirror Master and a Flying Periton. Both go to hand, and then we put one in the soul. For battle phase, we just swing for nine into our opponent. Our opponent is not willing to let it hit. Um, so he guards it for a no pass. Then our opponent rides uh, Evil Stealth Dragon Zangetsu and then calls out Tsunamasa using Tsunamasa's skill to give 3,000 power to itself and attacks for 9. Again, I block and then uh, for his critical, I just take that because I do want to damage to be able to use um, my two skills of Pop Pigeon and uh, Masked, uh, Masked Magician Harry. So we uh, you go Excel 2 and we draw a card when we ride Harry. We use Harry skill to counter boss one and discard a card. And we go ahead and call two Magia doll units calling Lunatech and Dark Side Mirror Master. We use Lunatech skill to make him shove the Kuragiri into soul. And then Dark Side Mirror Master counter charges one. We play a, a Lore Pigeon pop um, on the rear guard circle. And then we do put a Magia doll from our drop zone into soul. And that's the card, if you guys can see, that we discarded for Harry's cost ability. And I planned that on purpose just because of how this works out. So since we had an additional Lord Pigeon Pop, we played it on the rear guard circle because it doesn't really matter. But we went for a um, Lord Pigeon Pop's ability to call Starry Pop Dragon out. And we actually do generate another Excel marker. Um, and then this becomes the stage, obviously. I forgot to do that when I first rode Harry. But this becomes the stage. So since we have two Excel markers, um, it has 10 automatically. And then it gets plus 5k for our Lunatech, our Dark Side Mirror Master, and our Flying Periton. So it's 25. So we attack him for 17. Then we attack him for 27. We attack his Vanguard um, with Vanguard and he no guards. And we actually check double crit, which is extremely lucky. Um, but because of that, we attack for 45 to crit because we passed the threshold because of the triggers. And our opponent actually can't block it. So that's just, you know, one like one example of how you can really just blow your opponent out of the water. Especially if you get lucky and you're able to surpass the, um, the power threshold on Starry Pop Dragon very early. Um, so at the beginning of this turn, he was at zero damage. So, you know, just taking him from zero to six will remind you of a premium pale moon. And for some people, that's a toxic memory. <laughs> some people, not so much. Um, for game two, we're playing against uh, Aqua Force. This seems to be Revon. So we go first, we ride um, Masquerade Bunny. We look at top five and we do get a Harry, which is what we needed. So again, you know, a reason why we run Masquerade Bunny, you know, at two is that just that, that when you don't have that Harry, you can try to get it. Um, our opponent rides Baragios and looks at top five, uh, discards a Revan, and then looks at top five for an Algos and whiffs it. Um, and we take his Vanguard attack. We get a heal on defense. 
We go for Jacqueline skill, counter boss one. Uh, and then we get one Magia doll card because that's all we can find. So we don't have to put a card in the soul because we only got one. Uh, so we do play Prana on the rearguard circle because like I said, we can intercept with it and they'll still go to our soul. And then we play Masquerade Bunny looking t at top five. And then we whiff. Then we shuffle our deck. We attack for nine with our Jacqueline. He takes it and then he gets a critical trigger which makes our rearguard column unable to hit, unfortunately. So then he um, rides Gallius and attacks us for 17. We take it because we do want a counter blast to be able to use with Harry. So um, we go for riding Harry. We make our Excel circle the stage. And then we go for playing Jacqueline because we didn't have a Starry Pop uh, or a Lore Pop Pigeon this turn. So we go for playing Jacqueline. And then I realized that even if I did get a Lore Pop Pigeon like I did, I still need a counter blast um, to be able to do stuff. So. We just decided to go kind of passive with this turn and have that be what it is. We could have played these great ones as boosters, but again, I wanted to hold these for guard value because they do go into your soul after guarding. So we attack for 12 into our opponent. We check uh, two criticals again in this game. So I don't know what it is about Harry, but he really likes checking double crit. Um, and then uh, we attack for 37, our opponent blots. So our opponent rides into Revon and then plays a terrific Coil Dragon and plays Coral Salt and another last card Revan and a Baragios looking at top five and whiffing and then plays a Nerissa and uses Revon skill to rest Nerif Nerissa to minus 5k our Vanguard and then stands Nerissa with the Soul Blast and has a gain plus 10k for 18. So he attacks us with Terrific Coil Dragon. We choose to double intercept because we wanted to get those out of the way first and then our opponent attacks us for 27 which we take. Our opponent attacks us for 30 which we take and then uh, attacks us with this with which we take and then uh, since this is getting triple drive we decide to guard this for a three to pass because we did not want to give him the ability to just tech two triggers and end the game so we three to pass him um, he checks nothing nothing and then nothing which is very good because this works well into our next turn so we ride another Harry we get another Excel marker we kind of us when we discard the starry pop dragon because we're gonna get it back anyways so we're actually able to call out up to four cards because of Harry's ability now. So we only call out three. And we end up uh, linking him place his grade two in the soul because of Lunatech. And then we use Prana, 10k to Vanguard, 10k to Prana. And then we play our Lord Pigeon Pop and we play a Flying Periton in the back row. So we attack for 19, he blocks it. We kind of boss one bounce and then we call that Starry Pop Dragon from our drop zone to the field and it will also generate another Excel marker, drawing us another card, and then it will get plus 15K because we have three different Magia doll units on the board. So we attack for 32, which our opponent takes, and then we attack for 35, which our opponent won the passes, and we do get a heal trigger, and we put the power to Vanguard, which makes the, pa uh, the attack pass, and then uh, that ends the game. And so basically the, way, the reason that our opponent guarded in that way is because if not, if we hit a trigger anyways and our opponent was able to block Vanguard, we would have hit the threshold for 40k with Starry Pop Dragon, and then we would have been attacking for two crit, no Sentinels. So um, it was way better that our opponent tried to, I guess, one to pass our Vanguard um, and then guard, you know, our remaining um, card with, with that one 10k that he had in his hand, his or her hand. Um, so then we play against Octa Force again in game three. Um, our opponent goes first this time, riding into Baragios, checking top five, and he switched to Thavis, so he's playing the Thavis deck now. Uh, we ride into Dark Side Mirror Master, and it's looking kind of rough because we don't have a grade three. Um, our opponent does check a heal as well. Um, so we go for Jacqueline skill, checking top seven for two, which we do get, and then we shove a Prana into Soul. We call a Prana to Rear Guard Circle, and then we attack for nine. Uh, we, our opponent no guards and then we attack for nine again he blocks that he goes for playing Thavis and then he plays terrific coil dragon and Thanasis and then he goes for light penguin soldier giving 5k to his terrific coil um, he rests terrific coil using Thavis to retire one of our cards and then he goes for Nerissa as well and then goes for Nikki um, so at the beginning of the, his battle phase he discards a card to go into Lambros restands all of his rear guards um, and then Terrific Coil gets 5k more, so he attacks for 19, and then we take the rearguard, 
Uh, we get a critical trigger on defense. So we no guard Vanguard. He does get triple drive. So he gets a front trigger and that's it. So we take a damage. It's a heal. So we were actually looking pretty good here. We just still needed a grade three. And as you guys can see, that final damage that we checked here was a Mass Magician Harry. And then we G assisted and proceeded to look at top five and Mass Magician Harry was not there. I believe it was like the sixth or seventh card when I looked. Um, so that's pretty unfortunate. He just happened to snipe our one Mass Magician Harry that was near the top. Because I feel like when, you, when you're running at least four grade threes, like, you know, your units are going to be at least near the top in some way, shape, or form. So usually when you G assist, you will still get it. But unfortunately, in this case, we did not. Um, so we used Jacqueline to try to, you know, plus get some advantage to our hand and hopefully survive the next turn so that we can G assist again into Harry and try to uh, do some do some damage. So we attack uh, his uh, rear guard terrific coil for all these nines and he blocks every single one because he wants to keep that unit on the board. Um, he goes for light penguin soldier giving 5k. Then he goes for Vanguard Thavis uh, getting rid of my, one of my Jacklins. And then he goes for Nikki and then Lambros at the beginning of the battle phase restanding everything. Which this deck is absolutely ridiculous when you're behind your opponent. So it just has a lot of attacks to deal with. So I tried to block everything that I could. But I believe that because I didn't realize that he would counter charge off of this light penguin soldier, I thought I'd be able to block it everything. But he does restand a column because of Lamb uh, because of Lambros's counter bust one soul blast one. So um, I really didn't realize that he was going to do that. So I thought I was going to be able to block efficiently and be fine. Um, but he counter bust one soul blast one and then restands his frontal soldier. And because of that, we no guard Vanguard, and he does check a crit on Vanguard, and we take a damage. And then um, in our deck, I believe Harry was like this the next card that we would have drawn for turn. So we would we would have maybe been able to bring it back, especially with what his hand is looking like now. Um, but unfortunately, that is just one of those games where we got unfortunate, and I wanted to show you guys that because you know this deck does have that caveat of not always getting the perfect you know. I don't want to just show you guys just the perfect games. So with running only four grade threes, there are, you know, downsides that come to that. But anyways, that was the Future Fight Vanguard video for Harry. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below and comment down on the video letting me know what you thought. Also, be sure to subscribe as usual and click that bell button so you don't have to miss any future content. Check out our Twitch and the rest of our social media in our description down below as far as our and as well as our second channel as well and be sure to check out that join button lastly if you guys want to support the channel a little bit further but with that being said this has been josh from cardfight empire and i'll see you guys on tomorrow's video peace guys